What's up YouTube? This is LDS Reliance. Today I want to take you through a different type of video. I don't typically do computer stuff and server stuff even though that's my day job. I typically like to do fun projects and solar stuff and self-reliance stuff and DIY stuff in my spare time when I get to work on YouTube. Well, I've done some of this stuff in the past with mixed results and so I thought what the heck I'll do another video. Um, so this time I am, this project I'm working on, I am rebuilding one of my old servers. For those of you who don't know, I host some servers in my house. I do that because it brings in a little bit of income, it's something fun to do, it keeps me up on my, my Linux skills and my, my web hosting skills and, and you know, it's just something I enjoy doing. So this is my server closet. As you can see, I have a window unit that I've kind of created this hodgepodge to work indoors. It's a long story, don't ask. And uh, that cools the, the closet down. But in, in here I have several servers. I have a little rack, I have a firewall, switch, all that good stuff. And that's where I host several websites which, like I said, either for my business, for LDS Reliance, for, um, for my family, for other projects. So what I wanted to do today is I wanted to take this server, which I'm going to be decommissioning, because as you can hear, they are fairly loud. I have three of these that are identical, and they're loud, they're older technology, they're tired, they've been rock solid for me but I just don't want to press my luck and have something fail. So I thought that I would do a little bit of a hardware refresh and rebuild this. So without further ado, I will get started. So I built these about, oh, six or seven years ago. Um, I made them, at the time, these were low power consumption, all that good stuff. It was built on an Atom uh, processor, an Intel Atom processor that's embedded in the board. It didn't need to be super fast. It didn't need to be do anything crazy. It just needed to be able to run a few small business websites and email servers. So we had re uh, redundant uh, hard drives, embedded uh, processor, like I said, a decent amount of RAM, and then some cooling all in a small form factor. However, <clears throat> One of the problems that I always had was this. It's 220 watts is way overkill for this type of a server. Uh, I bought this chassis and it came with that power supply and I used it. Since, the, since I've built these servers and over the years, I've become much more energy conscious um, as I obviously learn more about solar and how precious, how hard it is to generate power. Um, I've become more conscious of that. Um, so there's no reason that I need 220 watts or obviously this doesn't run on 220 watts all the time but there's no reason that I need a bigger power supply like that for a small use like this. So one of the purposes is to use less power, one of them is to cut down on noise, one of them is to cut down on heat so I don't have to run that um, air conditioning contraption in my closet very often and also to make it more reliable. The spinning disk is a source of failure. Um, you know, SSDs can fail as well, but it's just one less failure point when you have something mechanical in there to go wrong. Also, we can eliminate these fans. So what I'm putting in is basically a newer version of this, but much, much more efficient, uh, much quieter, all that good stuff. This is an Intel J1900 embedded processor. So as you can see, it does not have any fan on it or anything like that. It just, just has a heat sink. So again, that's a one less failure point, much more, uh, you know, quieter as well. Um, it has room for eight gigabytes of RAM, which we will be using eventually. I don't have one of the sticks of RAM yet, but I'll just start off with one. Um, it will be using two SSDs in, in a RAID, RAID 1 configuration. And here is one of the sticks of RAM. It's an eight gigabyte stick from Kingston. So this will have 16 gigs total of RAM. This is a quad core processor. Um, you can look up the specs if you want. It's nothing fancy, but it's more than adequate for web server use. Now one of the things that's going to help me to reach my goal 
is this little guy here. And this is going to be the power supply. This will replace this monstrosity, which is loud and uses too much power. It's too inefficient because it has to be big enough to provide 220 watts. But we don't need that. All we need is this. This little guy is all the power that we're going to need, coupled with a laptop power adapter. But this guy will distribute the power. This will take a 12 volt input and it channels it through your 12 volt rails, 5 volt, 3.3, all that stuff to where it needs to be through the 20 pin connector on the side. This is called a Pico PSU or Pico power supply unit. It's a 80 watt power supply unit, which is still too big for what I'm going to be using. What I'm going to be using is going to max out in the 20s, 20 watts, but this is a much better option than this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to start taking everything out of this chassis and make room for the new components. Okay, now we have it all cleaned out and ready to go back together with new components. So basically we've removed all of the fans from the front, we've removed the power supply, we've removed the old motherboard, the old hard drives, and all we have left is the pins that go to the headers on the motherboard and another jumper that goes, or a pin that goes to the USB uh, for the front USB. So putting in a motherboard is pretty straightforward. I don't really need to go over that. Um, if you have never done that before, probably need to be watching a different video and not this one. So I'll go ahead and throw this sucker in there. Okay, we got the motherboard installed. So now we're going to install the Pico PSU, which is just as easy as popping it in until it snaps. There it goes. So you'll notice that this is a 24 pin probably can't see that. This is a has a has this motherboard has a 24 pin connector which leaves four pins open. However, those are all redundant pins. We don't need those. Uh, they just provide redundant 3.3 and 5 volt, 5 volt power. So not necessary to get a full 24 pin connector for this. So what we're left with is the normal SATA power connector and a uh, leftover Molex connector and then we have the connector that needs to go to the laptop power adapter. So we're going to put this out the back where the uh, old power supply used to go. We'll have to figure out a way to attach that in place at another time. And then I'm going to use an adapter to convert this into another SATA connection so that we can have two SATA power connections. Okay, next we're going to install the hard drives or the solid state drives here that I received finally in the mail. So we'll go ahead and get those added to this hard drive plate and installed in the chassis. Okay, now we have the hard drives installed, so now we can connect them with the SATA connectors. Before I get any comments on cable management, I don't give a crap. So I don't care what it looks like as long as it stays away from moving parts, which this does not have any. I don't care where the cables go. So I'm going to ignore any comments about sloppy cable management. So it just really does not matter. Okay, now I'm going to install the one, the piece of RAM. I still only have the one. The uh, seller that I bought this from only had one in stock. So I ordered from someone else who had free shipping and it's on a slow boat from China or something. So anyway, I'll have to add that other piece another time, but this will get us started. Okay, so this completes all of the components that go inside the server. So what I'm going to do is kind of push, push the cables down so that they'll lay a little bit more flat to allow for the case to go on top. And, and we do have the other piece of RAM that I'll have to add later, but we'll worry about that another time. I just want to be able to close this up so we can go ahead and start getting the 
operating system installed and start building this thing. Okay, so I had to wait about a week for the power adapter to come, uh, which is kind of a pain. I'm sorry I haven't had a video come out in a little while, but in the meantime, I fin figured out how I was going to mount the uh, power supply jack, basically. I uh, just drilled a hole in this uh, PCI slot plate here, and then uh, it's got a little nut that you can attach on to the outside. So that's that's secure now. Uh, it wouldn't really reach through over here very far, and I didn't have a place to really mount it so it went over here and this is a very a fairly rare laptop power adapter um, it's a very specific size I'll put a link to it in the video description um, it's it's cheap though it's much cheaper than the uh, the one that the Pico PSU company sells um, which is quite a bit of money and then they want $18 in shipping this one was only like 15 and it was free shipping on Amazon. So anyway, uh, it's gonna, just going to go in like that, just, <clears throat> just like you would expect. So now that we've got enough power, this is a 12-volt, uh, 6 amp supply, so 72 watts. So we should have plenty of power to go ahead and power this up. And I'll get a monitor connected and a keyboard and mouse, and we'll get started on installing the operating system. Okay, we're going to be installing CentOS 7, which is the current version of the Linux flavor that I like to use. Um, so we're going to need a optical drive in order to install the media. You can use a bootable uh, thumb drive if you want. And then, like I said, we're going to need a keyboard and a mouse. And I'm not going to go every single little bitty step, but I'm going to go over the basics. And then I'm going to give you some resources in the video description so you can take it from there. Okay, so hopefully this shows up well. Anyway, we're going to hit the power button. And it's a little trippy because most servers, when you hit the power button, they spin up really fast, all the fans kick on, and, and it gets really loud. This one doesn't do that. Uh, we got the, uh, the motherboard splash screen there, and it's blinking and booting up from the disk. So this is what happens when you boot up from the boot media. And we just want to install CentOS Linux 7. Okay, so it has found the disks in there and it's doing some, some checksums and some checking on the, the disks to make sure that they're okay. Alright, so eventually it will finish all of its checks and it will make its way to this screen. just need to choose your language and move forward. Okay, so then we get to a screen where we just, um, we need to select some settings. You need to choose where you live. I live in Central Time, uh, English language, keyboard US, minimal install. Um, you can install, basically there's, there's a few different configurations that you can install. I'm just going to install the minimum because I know how to install things later. If you want the kitchen sink, you can choose a, a bigger install. Um, this particular disk that I've burned doesn't have any other options, but you can burn other disks that have a lot more um, pre-installed software and things like that. Um, this is where we really need to concentrate because <clears throat> we need to create a RAID out of our disks. Okay, I'm not connected to the network right now. We're not going to worry about that. Um, I'm not concerned about anything else so we're going to begin the installation so we want to create a root password which is the password like the super user super admin account um, that you'll need from here on out okay finally we're done so we're going to click on reboot and it will come up with our new operating system okay so now we need to log in with our root user and the password that we set up and now we are logged in to our operating system. So this concludes what I'm going to show in this video. Uh, I'm not going to get into the ins and outs of Linux and how to set up a server because your needs may be different than mine, so on and so forth. I just wanted to show basically the, the process. It only took me a couple, two or three hours total with uh, all the hardware components and all the software components uh, and configuration and everything that we just did. Um, 
not counting all the waiting that I did for all the parts to come in, but that doesn't count. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time. Be sure to hit subscribe for more DIY and how-to videos in the future.